If you have your Bibles with you, we are moving this morning to the book of Exodus. Amen. The book of Exodus. How many appreciate our study of Genesis? I didn't know I didn't know how far those messages went. I kept meeting people and I kept both I kept receiving messages from unknown places, even in countryside I didn't realize it could get. I'm meeting a lot of people here who say we are enjoying Genesis message. And I said, Where where, where did you get? <laughs> so Said somebody sent link to me, somebody sent this one to me. So I told myself, I said, Ah, we have to be cautious and be certain that we are we are saying the message. Yeah, yeah like I was sharing with uh, some brethren who came to who were kind to come and greet us at home yesterday and fellowship. Some stayed over the night. I said, The secret of it all is that we must stay only with the message. Yeah. Don't look for other sources. Amen. They don't work eventually. Amen. They might exact you for a little time, but they will deflate you like a like a bad tire eventually. The message is enough for us. Amen. How many feels the message is enough for them? Amen. Praise God. Say so all that you need and you will ever need is laying in there. Amen. God bless you. As you continue to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Genesis chapter, uh, it's Exodus chapter 1. Amen. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already. I hope you still remember that. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generations. Generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied amen, amen. amen. and waxed exceeding mighty amen. and the land was filled with them I just feel like starting preaching on that but take note why do you think this happened there was a promise yes. amen amen that promise was their destiny. Oh my. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Watch the plot. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies, and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them tax masters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Amen. There is no circumstance that can change the word of God. Church, there is no circumstance that can reverse the promises of God. We will only be shortchanged by our attitude to the word. Yesterday, the word is the same. Today, it remains the same. 
Tomorrow, the world will remain the same. It is you and I that changes. But the world doesn't change. And our change is what affects our inheritance, our benefits of the promise. Who will attach himself to the world this morning? And say, permanently, I'm attached. Some are, some are brothers and they say they are root. And root is a sister. So you see, they become root by character. Because root attached. Hallelujah. Okay, so I don't keep you standing. Let's just finish reading the scriptures. Verse 13. <clears throat> and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of which the name of the one was Chifra and the name of the other Pua and he said when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Amen. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Amen. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive and the midwives said unto Pharaoh because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women very true they can never be the same when you are trying to be like them you are suffering from identity crisis You are better than them. Yes. With the whole of my mouth, I say it. The children of God are the best class of the people. Because, and we have the best identity. It's just that you don't realize it. Said, so I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. What else would you want to be if not a Christian? Whose other name do you want to bear if not the name of Christ? Amen. For they are lively and are delivered ever, that means before the midwives come in unto them. Amen. Whether they made it up or it is exactly so, we accept it. Amen. You shall be lively. Amen. If you are pregnant, you shall be lively. Amen. The Lord will supply all nutrients. Amen. And you go into the labor room and delivery room and it's just picking and you just come out. Yeah. And even start washing clothes. Yeah. That was what the Egyptian midwives testified to. And it came to pass. Okay, therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. Oh man. I want to see them in glory and shake their hands everyone who was good and kind to Exodus people Amen. let me say this, will have a place in the heart of God Amen. and if they have a place in the heart of God they will have a position in the kingdom Amen. it is a teaching of the word yes. in the second Exodus there was a Gamaliel Amen. who stood for the people of God in the hour that matters this hour here mattered yes. Amen you will see why and how it mattered. You will see why God appreciated these women. 
And God allowed it to be written down in the holy books. You will see why. Amen. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and worked very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Amen. God made them a sure memorial. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, he shall cast into the river. When they are killing in the delivery room, it's not working. Throw them into the river. And every daughter, he shall save her life. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. Even though you have started sitting before I said you may be seated. Amen. You are eager to sit down. What if I'm also eager to go and sit down? Can I sit down too? <laughs> so I should remain standing while you are sitting and enjoying yourself. Why you are even very, very eager to sit down. Amen. I'm on duty. May God, may God keep us with energy Amen. to keep standing for someone. Because when you begin to sit to preach, something is beginning to get wrong. All right. God bless you. We welcome ourselves again to the house of the Lord. At some point, if the ministers want, I will want us to create a space for them because we are going to watch something together. And it flows with the sermon so that our modern parents will also take very good precaution on this. We won't take you for too long. But we want you to be careful and to check certain things. So we're going to place something along the line very soon here. So as to warn all of us. Now, the setting we are seeing here the book we are beginning its study is the second book that God inspired to be collected and recorded by prophet Moses. Amen. And uh, as the name implies, the name suggests it is going to be the book of the exodus of the true church. Like we told us before now that there are three exoduses in the Bible. Amen. And I urge you as much as we are going through this to try and always be present. You could see how many doctrines we dealt with in Genesis. There are doctrines to be dealt with also in Exodus here too. And uh, it will bring you to the understanding of the message more and more. So, like I told you before, the world is reading stories, but we are reading life. And we are reading revelation. It's revelation to us and the book of life to us because everything in here applies to us and applies to our days. So, in here, we are beginning to look at the study of Exodus. And uh, we are starting from the seed exodus itself because like I said there are three exoduses in the program of God the first one is what we want to look at here and if we are able to understand this and all the events that are therein then you have automatically gotten an understanding of your own time and of the event in your own day Amen. Are you following? So the first exodus was when God was calling a nation out of a nation. Amen. Israel is to be called out of Egypt very shortly. And the second exodus is when God was calling a church out of religion. Amen. And the third exodus 
is when God is calling the bride, his own bride, from the church. All the three exoduses were performed by God himself. Yeah. <laughs> Are you fellowshipping with me? Be taking note of those points. All the three exoduses were all performed by God himself. There is no man who can lead an exodus. From the teachings of the word, exodus is a major deliverance. Amen. And it's a deliverance that is peculiar in the sense that it is always dedicated with blood and the power of God. Are you catching it? And the only blood that is fitted to lead or to open an exodus is the blood of God himself. Amen. That was why in the first exodus, he never used the blood of any man. He used the blood of a lamb to shadow himself. Amen. Because he is the perfect lamb. So he gave us the blood of a lamb. He said, this blood will be a figurative blood to shadow my blood. Amen. And uh, when it came to the second exodus, he literally and physically gave his blood. And in this third exodus, he has given his blood again. Because all the exodus people were saved by the blood of God. They were delivered by the blood of God. And each exodus is, dedica is dedicated and opened and led by God. Always in his pillar of fire form. Take note of all these things. You will see it clearly all around you. The reason we add the pillar of fire, you will see where the pillar of fire will become visible. You will see where God will introduce the pillar of fire to the people. Because before that time, it was Moses telling them about his leadership. God met me. God did this. The God, the I am, the I am said, let my people go. But it came to a point that God personally introduced himself in his pillar of fire form to that people. When we come to Exodus 23, you will hear God said, Behold, I send my angel before you. And Moses has always been with the people. Amen. So he wasn't talking of Moses. He was talking of a capital A angel. Which was he himself in an allot form. Or what they spiritually call his logos form. When he came to the second exodus, the pillar of fire came down and appeared before the messenger that will carry that exodus to the Gentiles. And he introduced himself as the Lord Jesus Christ. So this pillar of fire is here this morning. Amen. And when he appeared to Paul, he called himself the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are not keeping this picture here because of the white man you are seeing. We are keeping this picture here because of the halo of light that has even been scientifically defended as a supernatural light. And why will it appear at some point in this last exodus is to introduce himself that he has come to lead another exodus. He led it in the first. He did in the second. And he will lead it in the final one. And this final one is of a greater interest. You know why? Because this is the one that vindicated the first. When you plant a seed. Amen. The seed will go through many transformation process. But the seed does not become seed until the ending of that season of planting which is always called the harvest time. This is the exodus of harvest. This is the harvest time that all that God has planted in the beginning is to be harvested now. Hey, are you here church? Is it getting clear to you? And let me say this. 
In planting season, you will plant one seed of corn. But in harvest season, you have the potential to reap 600 from one seed of corn. So for every miracle done in the first exodus, we can have several multiples of it in this last exodus. For every plague, for every plague done, because plague to us is a miracle. To the Egyptians, it was a punishment. Anything that delivers you is a miracle. Anything that liberates you is a miracle. The system of all Exodus has always been to open the eyes of some and to blind the eyes of some. So it will always be a two-side thing depending on the side you belong. For us, it's a miracle. It's a sign. It's a wonder. It's a powerful demonstration. To the Egyptians, it's a punishment and a curse. So for every one that was done, expect several in these last days. And that is why till Christ come, earthquakes will never leave. Tidal waves will never leave. Epidemic and pandemic, cholera and all kind of sickness will never leave. They were released under the sixth seal as the judgment of God upon the people that have rejected their visitation. So watch closely as we go through this first exodus and you begin to understand what is happening. May God give us understanding. You love him? So here we see a setting. We can say that this is a preparation for exodus. But I was calling your attention to a scripture the other time to the verse, one of the verses the other time, just to get your understanding of why these things should be happening like this. And it will buttress the fact again that whatsoever the Lord has done, it shall be forever. You cannot add, you cannot subtract. And your life is not as loose as you think it is. There's a force, there's a power governing your life everything that is happening here was inspired by the statement of God in Genesis chapter 15 your children will sojourn in a strange land amen and I the Lord will bring them out by what amen he said the years of their sojourn will be 400 years and afterwards I will do what? Bring them out now God said that in Genesis 15 in Genesis 15 we have an Abraham who later became Abraham who later gave birth to Isaac and Isaac gave birth to Jacob and Jacob became Israel and he gave back to the patriarchs. Hallelujah. And the patriarchs began to have their own generation until from Jacob we could count 70 people, excluding Joseph. That didn't happen in a year. That did not happen in two years. It, has, it will happen in tons of years. Are you catching it? But everything that was happening till they found themselves in Egypt was part of the word of the Lord. Was part of the line that says your children will sojourn. All these people were accounted as Abraham's children because they were all in his loins. Are you catching it? So it doesn't matter the junction they appear. Because Isaac was in the loin of Abraham. Amen? Amen? And uh, Jacob was in the loan of Isaac. And the patriarchs were inside Jacob. That was why the tithe that who paid, that Abraham paid, was reckoned upon Levi, a third or fourth generation. The prophet said, there are things that you do today 
that bears and rub an impression upon your generation. Right or wrong? So when we speak of the gospel and you embrace the gospel, you are embracing something not just for yourself, even for your generation. Did you catch that? Amen. The only reason the throne of Judah was sustained for the children of David was because of David. Even Solomon led a poor life that will have made, that will have created an alteration. But the Bible said God remembered his promise to David. Amen. The prophet said, if you accept from the scriptures that there are generational causes, he said he also wants you to know that there are generational blessings. The children of the Rechabites, they got a generational blessing for their people by the way they stood with the word. The Bible told me that what happened to Timothy, the gifting and the calling of David, of Timothy was already reckoned through the grandmother Lois. The blessing fell upon Eunice. Amen. They couldn't preach, but Eunice brought forth a Timothy and God ordained him his servant because of the grandmother. Watch what you do. All the setting that we are seeing in here was simply because of Abraham. If you don't have a good physical lineage, you have nothing to worry about. The only thing you need to do is change your lineage. If I change my lineage to that of Abraham, which the Bible told me is possible. Did you hear me? It is possible. And it will happen. Amen. If I change my lineage to that of Abraham, all the blessings of Abraham become mine. It doesn't matter how much ancestral causes that are hanging upon me. The abstract to the title deed, which is the Holy Ghost, it will run, it will do a search to my generation and look at everything that would be against me, that has been against me, and that had the tendency to be against me, it will wipe them all out. Then I will say, nobody can curse whom the Lord has blessed. I am the blessed of the Lord. Amen. You can make a bridge this morning over your generation. They said in our generation, this is how it runs. If you accept it, it will come to pass. If it is something wrong, accept it. But if it is something bad, reject it. Come to the Savior and you will break generational curses. The word does. The baptism of the Holy Ghost does. They say we will take you to your village. They plan something somewhere. They are wasting your time. We have no time for rituals. We will stay right here. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, we will break every covenant. We will separate you from every strange influence. That is what the Holy Ghost is given for. Forget about this last day's prophet who only identify problems and they don't give you solution. They are your greatest bondage. I'm saying this because many are resorting to self-help. It's because you haven't tasted the message. If you truly taste the message and you enjoy the deliverance it gives, you won't run to any one mountain and be allowing one fake prophet to be doing incantation upon your head. If this message cannot deliver you, nothing else can deliver you. This is God's program. I'm a beneficiary. 
Hallelujah. And I know it is real. There is no alternative to this message. Let me repeat as I've always been saying. If you walk in this light with a mind of having alternative, you will not last. It is not now I've been saying it. I've always said it. All the preachers who are always having other resources, that didn't start now. I was telling some of the brethren yesterday, I said the idea of other resources I've started way back 10, 15, 20 years. When people will preach something fantastic and you will ask where is it in the message, they will tell you I got it from other sources. Other sources that they cannot talk about. Most of them today are no longer in the message. Some are attacking the message and some are just incapacitated around the message because they live by other sources. But we live by the main source. The prophet said, is our source and our resource. <laughs> Amen. Did you ever think about that? Is our own fountain and is what we dwell by. We came out of it and we live by it. That's the meaning. Live faithfully by this message and you will stay safe. You love him this morning. So whatever you see playing out here is not by the righteousness or the merit of those men. It is by the promise that can never fail. And I'm saying that you can secure your future generation. Coach me. You can secure them by living right with God. Brother Bram said the way you relate with God bears influence on your generation. It's a quotation. If something is the word, I stand on it fanatically. When Brother Bram said the birth pain utterances of Hebrew mothers follow after their children. Oh my. Many will wonder why that. Recently I saw even the people in the occult world, they were interviewing one. He said the same thing. He said, we came to discover that we want people who come to who come to give birth in our prayer houses or shrine to be careful what they say because we have discovered that the things they say are always upon their children. They are just discovering. We have always known it. Way, 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 way back. And what did the prophet tell me? He told me that God will use everything, even Satan, to confirm this message. That it is nothing but the truth. So science will confirm it. Satan will confirm it. Even Abalis will confirm it. Oh, glory to God. So let us start enjoying the Lord. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. For you to know that this thing that began to happen took years. So if we follow the statement of God in Genesis 15, let's even put it all at four. Let's put it from Abraham to Isaac. How many years? From Isaac to Jacob, how many years? From Jacob to the patriarchs, how many years? To the time that they found themselves in Egypt. The period of their sojourn in Egypt, let's say, as at this time, was even 390 years. I have a reason for saying that. So add 390 years to some other 200 and something or 300 years, you will get something like 700 years from Genesis chapter 15. Somewhere along that line. And yet what God spoke 700 years remained active 700 years later. Do you see why we can trust the word of God even now? A virgin shall conceive. They said it took 712 years. But the virgin conceived. Anything God says, my brother, anything he says, my sister, hold on to it like a lifeline. 
It doesn't expire. It doesn't go out of days. Then the Lord went to work. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel were fruitful. They were in a strange land. But God won the land for them. Isn't it true that wherever the soul of your fish are touch, as long as it is God's leading church, wherever the soul of your feet will touch, is given to you. Israel took possession until the entire Egypt began to be, get, to be, to be in fear. There came just 70 people Little is much when God is in it. In the course of 400 years, 70 people had become 2 million. At what rate were they growing every year? They grew so much. Just one family. Do you remember that? We are not talking of several families here. Only the family of Jacob. They grew so much until a nation of several families were afraid of them. They were not only afraid of their size, they were afraid of their health. How strong they were. <laughs> God's children are healthy people. Don't accept anything contrary. Even if you are not healthy this morning, speak to your body. You have a right to speak to your body. Say, body, hear the word of the Lord. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as my soul does. Body, prosper. Body, be in health. Because God's children are healthy people. The prophet said, if we are going to have eternal youth, eternal youth comes with eternal health. He said, we must enjoy a bit of it now. So don't ever personalize any sickness, they are not yours. Satan sells it. We will not buy it. Satan posted it. We will refuse the package. We shall write return to sender. Or refuse to sign. RTS. It doesn't matter if our name is written on it. Plus our address. Yes, the devil intended it for us. But until you sign their paper. Amen. Until you sign the paper. Somebody sent something to me. Amen. Oh, where's brother? We didn't talk about it again. That thing was actually a blessing. They sent something, a package to me. And I was not aware that anybody was sending anything to me. So here was this man who was so kind. You see, this world has become so bad. Until you don't know good people and bad people again. This man was so kind to come and look for the address and say, you have a parcel with us. I have a parcel. He brought an EMS posted something. So when he came, he was looking at our gate. Brochola was coming and said, you go to the gate, every F check who is there and I will join you. Because sometimes when they knock at either gate, we don't know which is sometimes. So he said, it is the guesses for me. I said, I'm coming. So when we got out, ah, we looked at the man. He wrote on Okada. He brought the paper. I said, yes. Yeah, so in Brazil's mind, he was thinking another thing. In my own mind, I was thinking plain. So I said, look, the road is so busy. I don't want to stress myself. Can you go and bring the parcel? The man agreed. He said, but who will say to my Okada? I said, Okada is not a problem. You go and bring it. So, Brother Allah was saying, no, he won't even go with you. He won't even go with you. Just go and bring it. 
So when they left, he said, would you have gone with them? This day of kidnapping. I, I said, oh, me, I didn't even think of that. I said, I see the way you are. I said, Mr. Security Conscious. <laughs> so we were laughing about it. And this man went and he kept calling. I've just gotten back to our office. So I'm coming back now. I hope I will meet you. I said, you will meet me. So when he came through, through, I saw my name on the thing. I saw our address the way I normally write it. I said, ah. I said, but who could have sent? So, you know, my wife followed me downstairs. I said, in case of anything, that be... <laughs> it was so strange. Ah. Then the man was looking. He said, ah. she, hey, believe me, Lisa. You don't want to believe me. He said, it's your package. So, I looked very well. Then I saw Voice of God recordings. I said, Voice of God recordings. Did I leave my... Did I leave my address at Voice of God? Because the way they wrote it is the way I normally write the address. So he said, But you will pay us this, this, and that. I said, Okay. I said, Give me the parcel. So I said, Wait for me here. I went upstairs. I cut open the parcel. And I saw a beautiful message tab ah. in the parcel. I said, ah. Then it was inside that I saw the name of the sister who purchased it and told voice of God to send it directly to me. I said, ah. I said, see now, we are, we are treating this man with. So I had to come downstairs and give him extra bonus for his effort. I said, he said, I just feel that I should bring it to help you. That I do it for people sometimes, but I don't know. Because sometimes we can go to the house and they will it will say, and they can lynch us. I said in my heart, when we are thinking that you are the... <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, I had to look. My name was on it. Everything was there, but if I have seen something, I will... This is where I'm going now. After he didn't know I've opened... He was so generous, he allowed me. Because normally, I should sign before he released it. I didn't sign. So when I saw it and I saw I said, okay, where's your paper? Uh, <laughs> and the man gave me the paper I signed. Amen. So what am I saying? Even if your name is written and it is your address, until you sign for it, it is not your own. Brother Bram said, if you see a snake, if you feel a snake movement in that parcel, give it back to them. I said, but your name is in there. I said, though my name is there, until I sign for it, it's not mine. So whatever the devil brings, return it. Signing for it is accepting it. Oh, it is my sickness. It is my high blood pressure. It is my diabetes. It is my kidney stone. It, whatever it is, refuse to sign. Because God's children are meant to be healthy people. If they are pregnant, they are meant to be lively people. I believe the testimony of the Egyptian. I accept their testimony. That the Hebrew mothers are not like Egyptian mothers. Then don't behave like them. Don't dress like them. Don't talk like them. Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. And when you can do that, the word will start answering to you. The word will vindicate you. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel were abundant, were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and works exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. They took over everywhere. Waxing mighty is that they were rising. They were taking charge. They were all these strong positions. And yet they were in a strange land. Until their horse began to get jittery. Amen. All these things happening to them. If you go back to Genesis 15, this is what I'm saying you will see it perfectly there. 
That was the promise of God to this Israelite. So Exodus chapter 1 is confirming that what God said in Genesis 15 is the truth. He's confirming that it happened. And so will it happen in every life that confesses the word to be the truth. A Pharaoh that knew not the blessings of Joseph. Nobody will not know Joseph. Understand that statement. Amen. He does not want to reckon with the blessings, with the achievements that Joseph brought to the land. Did you catch it? Because from, don't forget that the body of Joseph is still there. Joseph has not been buried. Uh, 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 uh. You didn't catch that. The bones are still there. Amen. It's in the records of Egypt. Joseph wasn't an ordinary man. His pictures are still in the hall of fame of the Egyptians as one of the former leaders of Egypt. So no government, no succeeding president can forget a past president. Read the word with revelation. But he knew not Joseph because he does not want to reckon with the blessings and the achievements of Joseph. He was overtaken by the pressure that the people of Joseph were bearing. So he became jealous. And everything that pertained to the people of Joseph must be discountenanced. But he's making a mistake. The greatest mistake the Egyptian president made was to know not Joseph. Because Joseph was their blessing. Joseph was the savior of Egypt. Joseph was the Lord Jesus Christ. So if a man denied Joseph today, he denied Christ. It is the greatest offense you can commit. This is the reason every pounding will come upon Egypt. If he knew Joseph, he will bless his people. Do you understand? So I want you to understand that statement. There was nobody in Israel that did not know Joseph. In Egypt, literally. Do you understand? His fame, his record is in everywhere. Every succeeding pharaoh knew their past pharaohs and their prime ministers. Joseph was one of them. So it's not easy to be forgotten. His mark remained in there. It's just for us to say today, uh, our growing children, they don't know President Shagari. They might not know him face to face. Amen. But it's in the history books. Former presidents of Nigeria. Even up to 1960, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, they still talk about him till today. So nobody will say they don't know. You might say you have not met him. You understand? Even some people today, some generations today, they don't know who Abiola was. Oh sure. It's as close as that. If they were born later than that, they don't know. But they have heard of that name. Amen. So how much more somebody who is a king in a whole land who say you don't know. So it's figurative. It does not, he wanted to discountenance. He wanted to disparage. He wanted to disrepute everything Joseph did. And he cannot walk. <laughs> Did you hear me? He cannot work not because Joseph is still existing. But Joseph was a product of promise. As long as that promise is still alive, anything you do against Joseph, you are doing against the promise. Anything you do against Israel, you are doing against the promise. The promise says whoever blesses you must be blessed. So whoever costs you, what will happen to it? And I am that Israelite today. This is why I don't fight any battle. The Bible told me that there is no enchantment against Jacob. He cannot walk. Because Jacob lived under a blessing. He lived under a covenant. You cannot curse him. I am uncursable. 
the only person who can cause me is God himself. But he has chosen to bless me. So I live above every cause. Amen. What will make Pharaoh to cause Israelite here? Did you ever look at it, church? For this guy to start working against these people, what did they do to him? This is why the Bible said, a cause causeless. A cause that is done without cause, without a reason, shall not stand. Even in my case, if they have a reason, it will still not stand. I have scripture for you. Don't worry. Dissolve your doubt and relax yourself. Because I am in Abraham. Blessed is that man upon whom iniquity will not be imputed. Israel didn't do anything. Maybe when he assumed this position, they must have gone to greet him, did goodwill message and everything. But Pharaoh was just scared. He was just jealous. But let me give you a spiritual dimension. He cannot help but do what he did. Because he is also part of the promise. Are you catching it? He cannot help it. Even if he doesn't want to do it. Ah, God will say, no, you cannot break my word. You must do it. So whoever is doing anything wrong at you, even without a reason, it is part of the package. You say we are talking of a nation, not an individual. Be spiritual church. She made a crippled guy. When David was rejected as king and overthrown by his own son, and David bowed his head in humility of defeat and he started leaving the city. She may came out in his incapacitation. <laughs> because it was of the house of Saul. Excuse me, church. In your recollection, what wrong did David do to Saul? Show me just one. Just one. You said nothing. But she may accuse him. He said he did. He said, you see now, God has brought all the evil which you did upon the house of... That is to tell you, look, church, no matter how bad a person is, he will have his followers. Don't be a sympathizer or a follower for evil. She may came out and started cursing David. And one of the soldiers said, who is this dog? Let me get his head to talk to the anointed of the Lord like this. Ah, 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 ah. David said, uh, uh. you sons of Zeruiah don't cause me problem. You started again. <laughs> and the sons of Zeruiah were tough. He said, uh, uh, why do you want to attack him? Maybe God has told him, cause David. David was a spiritual man. He said, he, he told his followers, this thing she may is doing is part of the package. When believers start are realizing that, that whatever part any man plays in your life is beyond that man himself, is part of the package. You will rise above prejudice. You will rise above complexes. You will rise above bitterness. You will rise above unforgiving spirits. You will forgive every man. And you will say, play your part. I'm enjoying the show. So play your part. I'm enjoying the show. This is what will make a believer to be stable in any situation. All this ten, 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 carnal action and carnal reaction is because you haven't met God in the sense you should meet him or you are devoid of the secrets of life. When God turned things around for David and they came back, it was the same she made that went to meet him first to beg for his life. David said, I have no problem with you. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> He said, I have no problem. Enjoy yourself. The day of reckoning will come. When the day of reckoning came, David told Solomon, 
of some two or three people you should watch out for. Amen. And David never told Solomon what to do. He said, apply wisdom. And Solomon, a man of wisdom, he didn't touch anybody. He just said, you, you must not go out of this territory. He said, if you go out, your blood will be upon your head. Agreed? He said, I agree. Sign the contract. He said, you, you must not do this. He gave them all and he left them. And they started watching. They actually destroyed themselves. Did you see that? Give God the right of way. Amen. Brother Bram told me, he said, there is no need fighting. <laughs> I love that statement. He said, if I have to be reacting to what everybody has got to say about me, I myself will be falling from grace. You sit there and all you are doing is snooping for information. You will see, you will soon hear your driver cursing you. If you are not careful, you will have your child. You will hear your child mocking you. A man who is striving for mastery does not entangle himself with distractions. So the pure, all things are pure. God bless you, saints. And we are enjoying the Lord. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. That is all their offense. Come, let us deal wisely with them. Lest they what? Multiply. It was the advancement of Israel that became the headache of Egypt. Did you catch that? Their multiplication. All Satan wants to do is to decimate the population or to decrease the population of the kingdom. Of our kingdom. And it does that by attacking multiplication. And the way he attacks multiplication, listen to me, is by attacking the offsprings which are meant to be the continuity of the generation. Do you see why young people are very vulnerable? <laughs> it's a problem of every exodus. Now, we are looking at a physical exodus. Is that right? But we are in a spiritual one. The principles and the characteristics will remain the same, but the working might be different. But Satan aims to achieve the same thing at the end of the battle. So he has a target for the young people. If I could get this, if I could destroy the children both the ones that are born and unborn. Because the devil hasn't stopped. He started with the ones in the womb. When the project failed, he started looking at the ones in certain brackets. He told the midwives, kill them the moment they are born. It didn't work. He said, okay, after they are born, get them and throw them into the river. That didn't work. As those things were not working, remember those children were growing. Then he created an age bracket and he said, go and wipe all these ones out so that they will be weeping in the house of Hebrews. Why did he, why was he doing that? To stop the continuity, the progression of the Exodus church. But let me tell you this morning, that Exodus was God's program. This is also God's program. Now, the reason I'm saying this is that you must not yield to the temptation. Listen very carefully. Because here is the trick of the devil. We have analyzed the problem, isn't it? We have analyzed the tactics, the plan of the devil. Now, what we don't get conscious of is how does God intend to confront this plan? This is where Satan inspires us to start going into programs in order 
to resort to self-help to help ourselves. The generation that were here, they do not know what to do. But they knew that Exodus was God's plan. If it is God's plan, it will take care of his program. It will take care of young people. It will take care of old people. Do not attempt to take care of them by a program that God has not given you. A self-invention program will destroy them further. All your manufactured programs, what are they achieving? It takes the messenger to fashion the program for the bride. When Moses came on board, he was the one that developed. No, he didn't develop. He was the one that showed God's plan to attack every onslaught. William Bram left us with, he didn't lift us with a work that is in progress. He completed the cycle of the world for us. Stay with that cycle and you will stay safe. The program he gave us under God is the program God has designed to take care of all. Don't abandon that and invent yours. Inventing yours to tackle the devil is also devil's program. <laughs> now, now, they say it's a fanatic here now. Yeah, my fanatism is coming out. But I'm showing you a secret. <laughs> because what ends us up as a failure many times is to think that we are more concerned than God is concerned. There is enough, in, there is not enough plan or tactics of the devil that can destroy our children. Listen to me. If he didn't succeed in the first exodus, he will fail again in this last one. I'm, I'm not sugarcoating. I'm not fantasizing. I'm standing on the word. If he failed in the first, because the first was the shadow, here is the substance. The first was the type, here is the anti-type. The real image is here. If he fell, then he will fail now. So stop, stop worrying yourself. When Moses worried himself, he came up with a program. His program achieved only one Egyptian. And that was the end of the business. He couldn't even wait to defend his achievement. He ran away and developed complex against the people he was trying to deliver. Come on, church. That is how a failure you will be with your self-invented program. Let us all come back to the message. Is that well with you? All right. He said, let us deal with them. Let them multiply. Amen. And what do they do? In order to attack, I'm coming, get, get the thing ready now. In order to attack multiplication, they increase tasks. I told you, I said, these things were happening physically in the first exodus. But in this exodus, it's a spiritual journey. There will be so many things that will be targeted at our children. And this is why the prophet said, it will take you being a true Christian to survive this hour. For those of you who are modern parents, I know you like occupying your children with cartoons. Did you hear me? Are you catching it? You think I want to attack it. That's why you are. That's why you're on the defense. There are educative things. It doesn't matter. But don't trust those things enough. And just give your child a tablet and is upgrading it as he or she wishes to watch cartoons that we use it to keep them busy. You are a tax master of Egypt. The devil is infiltrating everywhere and anywhere. 
Even those cartoons you think are harmless, they are becoming harmful and they are becoming devil's media to preach to your children. Don't be a careless parent. When another exodus, bring on my... I want you to watch something before I go on. If I close on this, it is fine. You are going to watch two cartoons here. Oh, okay, they are showing me here. I don't want you to miss what this guy is saying. So stop it until you get your volume. Hey guys, what I'm going to show you today is pretty shocking, but it just... It's okay now. Hey guys, what I'm going to show you today is okay. pretty shocking, but it just goes to show where we are in the world today. When I saw this, I honestly couldn't believe it. I went to the official Nick Jr. and I went to the Disney Jr. or whatever it's called page to make sure this was official. This is Nick official. They're Dion, playing this Disney on television to our children. Kinds. This is just absolutely crazy. See 20 what years ago, 10 now. years ago, if you said that this would be where we're at today, people wouldn't wouldn't believe you, but just take a look at this and you may, you're probably going to be shocked by this as well. Watch this. Watch this. There you are. You missed our royal ball. We met the most amazing princess. But they ran away and all they left behind was this. Everyone, there's something I need to tell you. Listen. The princess who came to your ball tonight was me. <laughs> I'm Gonzarella. <gasps> but Gonzo... Why didn't Vu tell us? Because you all expected me to look a certain way. I don't want you to be upset with me, but I don't want to do things just because that's the way they've always been done either. I want to be me. Oh, Gonzo, we're sorry. It wasn't very nice of us to tell you what to wear to our ball. You're our friend, and we love you any way you are. Yeah, yeah of course we do. Yeah. I say we get rid of this old royal handbook and That's make Bible a now. better one. And in our new handbook, everyone can come to the ball dressed however they like. Yeah! Pause it. Did you catch what he said? This as a boy. And has been raised as a boy. He's even supposed to be a prince. And they brought him the royal crown. And try to express to him that you're a prince, you must dress princely. He said, Well, it's avoiding you people because all of you, you are selfish. It's the way you want me to appear that you are telling me, but you have not asked me how I would love to appear. And they were wondering, How would you love to appear? And he changed. A boy dressed as a girl. Bob Riskies and all the rest of the nonsense. And he said, and they are now asking, him, ah, but you didn't tell us that we've been offending your mind and things. He said, because you wouldn't listen to me, you wouldn't accept me. None of you wants me to be myself. And since you are asking, I want to be me. And, and uh, they said, oh, we are so sorry that we have put you under so much pressure. Then if that's the case, let everybody boo they her. Let's throw this old book of instructions away. That was the Bible. And they started applauding, you know, the way he wants to express himself. So it's okay for a girl to be thinking that this is a boy and start dressing like a boy. That's what they are packing into the art of your little ones. When the prophet said, watch all these things, televisions and so forth, he said, because they are preparing your children for the blast that will consume them, you think you are wiser than that. It has begun. This is a new release. And you cannot speak against it out there in the world. If they had me speaking against this on these tapes, it's going to be a problem. That I'm frustrating the desire for people to express themselves the way they want to be. And they did it so innocently until your little ones could start feeling, will start feeling that yes, I can choose, I want to be myself. And tomorrow they will tell you that it's a sickness. Homosexualism is not any sickness of the mind. 
is a perversion. Is Satan. If it is a sickness, why are they teaching children? They want to start working upon their minds. Because nowadays, the reason Satan has made it, you buy those tablets, the programs are already imputed. You don't use any DVD or CD again. Is that so? They only tell you to be upgrading and they will be adding for you. Watch the nonsense they are adding for your children. Let's see the second one. Continue. Oleku, Let's see the second one. You will watch, you will see what they are projecting in this Absolutely one. Absolutely crazy, guys. Junior. You, you think putting on a kid's channel, you can trust the channel, and now you could be in your living room watching TV and this garbage pops up. And here's the thing, guys. I know people are going to watch this and downlight and dislike it and say, you're a bigot, you're this, you're that. This is being forced on our kids. Our kids don't even get to choose this. This is what they're forcing. And look at the Muppets. Of all things, we all grew up watching the Muppets, and this is what they did to your boy Gonzo. They made him Gonzarella. And this is absolute insanity, and it's going to get crazier with this agenda as the times get closer. As we approach these end times, sin's going to get greater. What, what you might say is the point of this? The point of this is the devil indoctrinating our kids so that wrong becomes right and right becomes wrong. Because anyone that Isn't goes that against this incident? ideology and this thought process is now considered the hater, now the bigot. I'm now the hater because I'm disagreeing with this. Now I'm the bigot. And I have four little girls, six, four, two, and 10 months or 11 months old. And this is what is happening on television. You can't even let them watch just normal television, Disney Junior. And this is why you guys are like, why are you so against Disney? Why are you so against this show and that show? Guys, are you not seeing this? Open up your eyes, turn on, go on Netflix kids right now. Every show, witchcraft, magic, spells, transgender agenda, everything, every cartoon now you see has this pumped into it. And these children are now three, four, five, six years old, confused and sexualized because of these shows, because you can just be whatever you want, do whatever you want. Okay, it gets worse. Not only is it the Muppets, but I want you to see, this is, guys, this is real stuff. I know it's shocking to many of you. This is Blue's Clues, which I grew up watching. I let my children watch up until now. And I want you to see what's on Blue's Clues. Nick Jr., this is official. This is not some made-up spoof video. This is on Nick Jr. Watch this. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's no, just disturbing and it's long and it's just... I could point out every single point in the video. I won't. Just take a look at this, how crazy this is. Watch this now. Hey, Blue, look at all these families. Hi, families. It's time for a pride parade. Families marching one by one. Hurrah. We're watching them. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. This family has two mommies, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big Are you seeing something? There will be another parade. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. This family has two daddies, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big Parade, come on, friends! Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah! Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah! These papas are non-binary, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade! Families marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah! Families marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah! Trans members of this family all love each other. Transgenders. So and they all go marching in the big parade. Come join the fun. Families marching Come join five the fun. by five. Hurrah, hurrah. Families marching five by five. Okay, I think you get the okay, picture. This goes it. on for... Did you see what they are projecting here? Did they ever show families with dad and mom? Are you catching it? They are promoting lesbianism and homosexualism. And the children will be singing that and say, why am I not having two daddies? Why am I not having two mommies? But did you ever see in here where there are two mommies, do they have one dad there? Where they have two daddies, do they have even one mom there? 
They never showed you families with one daddy and one mommy. All through what you see here. Is that a transgender, uh, uh, homosexual, or lesbianism? Did you catch it? This is the way they are innocently trying to destroy the mind of children. So all you people with multi choice and whatever you call it, and you are subscribing and you say you have kids channel, the devil has entered your house. Note very carefully. It used to be you say, uh, okay, you can oh, they watch something with parental guidance. When the Holy Spirit told the prophet, kick that thing out of your house. With my shotgun, I will blow it to nonsense. You think you are more spiritual and wiser than the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, it's an age of world wide web. And Satan will take over everything. Look at the stages it began here. It will spiritually tell you the stages of destruction. It said, kill them the moment they have been born. They didn't succeed. Then they took it further. They are already born. Throw them into the river. They didn't succeed. He will go further to give age bracket. And it will be a bloody massacre at that age. You can't have a too much modernistic state, taste and survive as a Christian in this hour. Let your taste be the word of God. Before you start telling stories that touch the heart. And you start disturbing people, pray for my children. Watch what your children is watching. Brother Bram said, you've got four responsibilities to apply the token to your homes. Are you here? We will see our home. Whether it is popular to you or unpopular. He said, you hold them the responsibility of praying for them. Of talking to them. Share with them the word of the Lord. Amen? Of living a life worthy before them and creating the right atmosphere in the homes. He said the right atmosphere in the homes won't stand for certain things. It won't stand for television. It won't stand for your whole dirty magazines and all dirty cartoons. It used to be in their day books. It has come into electronic form today. He said cast out those nonsense. And he said when you are doing it and your neighbor is asking what is going on, tell them we are doing house cleaning. You can never be more civilized than the word of God. Neither can you be more sophisticated than the word of God. These are kid cartoons. These are kid channels. So when the children are growing tomorrow and they say, let me express myself. And they are glorifying transgender nonsense. Somebody who is a man always feeling like he's a girl, he said, I am trapped in this body. And somebody will tell you that uh, uh, it, it is a kind of sickness. It's a Satan's lie to suggest it's a sickness. If it is a sickness, they won't do this. They are doing this to indoctrinate the people. Amen? You watch most of them, it is the nonsense they've kept their eyes upon. Amen? Some have watched things like porn. They've watched masturbations. They've watched all kind of nonsense until it took over their life. The Bible said until they lost the natural use of a woman. It's in the scripture. And brother, the Bible told us is a perversion, is a sign of reprobacy. And a backsliding doctor is telling you it's a sickness. Tell it to the Marines. This world as constituted is modern day Egypt. The pharaohs are back to predate on our children. Mm -hmm. It's not sounding popular because I've eaten some of your hot spots. It will save your soul. It will save your generation. If you ignore it, it's your headache. Happy is the man who has not shown to declare the old counsel of God. Satan will take you farther than you are prepared to go. I'm only showing you what happened in the first exodus. I'm bringing it to life for you in the third exodus. Then it was a physical battle. Right now it's a spiritual battle. 
They remove the canes in our schools. Is this scriptural? If I'm asking questions, please, I need answers. Is this scriptural? The Bible said foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It takes a rod of correction to drive it out. Those who did not create children are teaching you how to raise children. It's a lie. He said, let's just talk to the child. We will talk to the child. The word says so. If the child refused talking, he told us to get a rod of correction. He told us to give them protoplasma stimulation. Their brains need to research. Modern civilized parents will not do that. That is where there is so much perversion. But a Christian parent will do that. You send your children to all these nurses and KG school. Do you know kindergarten school, what they only show them is baby and all kind of cartoons? Do you realize that? That's what you spend hundreds of thousands for. They help them change their diapers and everything and show them film. Imagine if the owner of the school has this kind of orientation. They don't write it on their faces, church. Are you following me? And look, God is not going to hold any teacher responsible for the poverty of upbringing of your children. He will hold you responsible. You have a responsibility to know what your child is feeding upon. Because evil spirits, the prophet said, I can feel the invasion of evil spirits, even in the message. Children are becoming lesbians. They are becoming homosexuals. Even around the message. These are the nonsense they are wiping their minds with. How many of them are dealing with all kind of sexual perversions? You say, don't say it. I will say it. It's just that I will not be vulgar about it, but I will say it. A lot are dealing with, a lot are struggling with sexual perversion addictions. And some learnt it from small. Because it has always been a feral tactics to get the children. He left the adults. He started targeting the children. And let me close by this. Young men are more targeted than even young women. That is why it seems today we are having much more serious young girls than young boys. The girls are coming up with better results. The boys are coming up with rubbish. And they are supposed to be the leaders of the house. We live in the age that most of them are not serious. They are not committed to spiritual things. And from them is the seed to bring continuity. Do you see why why Pharaoh was attacking the young boys more? Because they are the one that carried the seed. The girls are the seed receiver. But the seed giver is the man. If we can destroy the young boys, there will be no seed to give this one in order to conceive. That is the idea. And that is why family lives are becoming in crisis. And that is why a lot of them are not even ready for marriage. When you have a spirit, I start of being called to isolate like Paul, that is making you so unserious, and you are not thinking of settling down. Coach me. You are having a pharaoh's anointing. Ah, this exodus is itching up now. You brothers that are just like Adasika, you are becoming 30, you don't have a direction. You don't know you are living under the spell of Egypt. (laughs) I'm saying it, bro. 
Say we don't care about those things. They want to go and smoke. They want to go and carry women. They want to be hooked in drugs. They want to be run. I know guests do it also. But come around. It's not peculiar here. All over the world. You will not see boys in church. We even thank God for here. We thank God for our nation. Go to some country. All the boys are out of church. Raised up as church children. Am I right or wrong? You can relate with what I'm saying in the beach. Those who are in church are struggling with one thing or the other. Maybe if they let them to understand some of these things, maybe there will be a realization. And the devil is not stopping. Because he wants a permanent destruction of the future of the kingdom. <laughs> But Satan, I tell you again this morning, you failed. Satan, listen and listen good. You failed. You failed in the first. You will fail in this one. You think you can come up with this kind of cartoons and we will not detect you. Our eyes are too eagle. We've got eagle eyes. We can sense you from afar. We know what your plans are. But because this is God's divine program, you have failed. But for it not to be that I'm saying my own, you must accept this truth. You must rise up like Abraham and take a sharp knife and start circumcising your home and start cleaning your environment if you don't want a perverted generation as your children start doing clean up many of them will take sinful habits by the things you keep in your house they tell you true life story all true life story that I've ever seen is always story of immoral escapades those are the things you are keeping in your shelf your children will pick it someday all those meals and bones, all those dirty novels. I don't know the ones they have again, but in those times, those are the ones. But you can see the devil raising the standard each time. But I thank God when the enemy comes like a flood. You have the key to the redemption of the children. Don't be guilty of them. Amen. The prophet said, keep them under the spirit until they are old enough to receive the Holy Ghost. It's your responsibility. Amen. Especially you young girls that are married now. Because some of you yourself, you are not demonstrating the capacity for a good motherhood. Watch your own postings. Must you always post? Must you always do status? And some of you are so unwise. I'm using that language. Because I'm blushing this morning. Sure, you are so unwise. Things that are not even fit. That will raise questions about your life. You are posting on uh, all your status. What are we talking about? It is who you are inside that is just coming out. Brother Bram said, let me go to the office of a man or to the house of a man. Let me hear the music they are listening to. Some of you dance to worldly music. And you don't feel it harmless because of strange influences from the internet. It doesn't matter who you are. And you are so foolish physically and spiritually. Permit my rudeness. You will even post that. You damned, you don't care whoever looks at it. It's because that is who you are. A lot of you are struggling to cope. Come to the Savior, make no delay. If you start motherhood on that premise, you will destroy your children. Slay queens around the church. They won't get son of God to slay.
Can I close, please? Some of them actually want me to close. The only reason some of you are spending your life savings to buy a phone with large screen is so as to give you good watch of the nonsense. Huh? He said, let it be a good camera. Sunday things. <laughs> Friday episode. What is good in you to be doing, to be showing your backside and be doing like this and posting that on Facebook? You have a dirty evil spirit. You want the world to be admiring your shape. You have an evil spirit. The prophet said, don't tell me otherwise. He said, the wrong spirit is upon you. You might be as innocent as a lily, as pure as a virgin, yet you have a lustful demon. Uh, Christian girls are doing that now. Uh, did I even use Christian girls? Church girls. Church boys and girls. If you are a Christian, you will shun those nonsense. Why must your life be in public? What are you advertising? How much have you made? You want to gather likes and followers so that Facebook will be paying you money. It's a wages of iniquity. Are you seeing how perverted the world is? Somebody is having sex, having a fear, and is posting that. And is driving conversation from the entire world. You see the pollution. You see the perversion. He wants to make wages on immorality to drive traffic, and that become a subject of discourse. Let somebody post Jesus is the truth, the way, and the eternal life. No like. No like. He will get no like. Maybe some of you are even liking Tiwa Savage. You have the demon that she has. Fallen angels came in human flesh to pollute the earth. Let me tell you, God will judge. The Bible said God will destroy those who are destroying the earth. That girl is one of the most Iwara sexual garbage on earth. Somebody who lacks self who has identity crisis you are about 40 years old you are still behaving like an 8 year old because she has money say so why did you mention that brother Brown mentioned Elvis Presley he said I really, I really don't have, but I have to do it to warn you people because these girls are taking strong influence Did he not mention the Beatles? Did he not talk about Marie Limoro? Deal with all those things before you come and attack me. If they are so at liberty, they to call out people now. I'm calling her out too. Sure. They call out people. They do videos against those that they don't want. I'm doing my own video now. You can send it to her. And not only her, send it to Bob Risky too. Send it to all of them. Who is another bad girl like them? What's this? The, that one is that one is a is a filthy can. Ordinary twenty one years old. Those, those are the things you use data. Look, keep your eyes on things that will promote your kingdom. That we add value to your life. I know we cannot shun the appearance of those things. We live with them. But I watch how much you duck your head into those nonsense. And in your heart admire them. Mm. They said, the Bible said, they do not only do those things, but they have pleasure in those who do. See how they are rewriting morality to you. As if it's a right thing. He has left husband house. Start taking a body to everywhere. And it's kill. I cannot do what, the, the, what is natural to me. I said, demon anoint that your mouth.
May God deliver us from this untoward generation. These are the activities of the devil like it was with Pharaoh. Amen. This is why some of you too, young couples, listen to me. Say, I will divorce you. Uh, yes, they say it. Church girls. Because you watch too much. You watch too much social media. And it's even giving you a wrong language. Let me tell you this morning. God said I hate divorce. You are glorying in an abomination to God. Repent of that nonsense. If I, if I, if I, if I take in for you, I will have bought it. You a Christian. You are too filthy. You are a murderer. You have potentials to do it. You see, I'm joking about it. Christians don't joke about evil. They don't joke about nonsense. The Bible says you must shun profane babbling. If dozens are coming to you, your heart is not right. You are a polluted can. Come to the Savior. Some of you will say, I won't come to church again. Stay away. The one you have had will go with you. It will judge you. It either judges you or delivers you. Nonsense. The Holy Ghost is not a cesspool. It's not every Tom, Dick, and Harry. In the apostolic time, it is so such as you be saved. If you are not ready for salvation, this place will not contain you. As they say, this place will be too hot for you. No matter how long you manage, you will find your level. But with the love of God in my heart, I plead with you. Please come and be saved. Come and accept Christ. But if you choose the wrong way, I'm helpless. Hallelujah. This was what Pharaoh wanted to do. The prophet said, he's too deadly in his game. He said, before a thing righteous starts, he wants to cut it off. And that was why he made the children of those little ones his target. We shall multiply. We shall expand. Our coast will be enlarged. Whether the devil likes it, um, we are not living by his dictate. Our destiny is the promise of God. No devil in hell or on earth can change that. Our course will be enlarged, I repeat. We shall expand. We shall progress. We shall be better than this. Each day will be a celebration of milestones spiritually, physically, materially, financially, in our health, in every area of our life. Nothing shall by any means hurt you and I because we live under a promise. We live under a covenant. Satan will waste his time. This exodus is God's program and we shall make it because God has given us and is releasing to us his divine energy by way of his word to fortify us against every temptation, pollution and perversion of this hour and everything he sent we shall receive. Is that a deal together? God bless you. We have covenanted together before the Lord and the Lord will uphold it for us. Let us be truthful. Let us be honest. Let us make our mind to serve the Lord. Amen. Whatever comes, whatever goes, we shall overcome because we have a promise. I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, I have decided I follow Jesus. Oh, I have decided 
Those who follow Jesus, there will be no turning back. There will never, never be no turning back. Oh, the world behind me. Oh, the cross before me. Oh, yeah, the world behind me. And the cross before me. Oh, the world behind me. Yes, the cross before me. There will be no turning back. There will never, never be no turning back. Oh, I've decided. Oh, I have decided. Oh, to follow Jesus. Have you decided? I have decided. As for me. Jesus, Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. There will be no No turning back. Ninety-one. La 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 la. La 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 Oh ah 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 Oh ah 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 Oh yes Lord I have started to walk in the light Oh shining upon me from heaven so bright Oh, I bear the way I need all is a new I'm started in Jesus Oh, I'm going to ask for me I'm going Can I hear you now? Yes, I'm going to Oh, yeah I'll pay the price Whatever others do Yes, I'll take the way We the Lord Despite few I'm going through with Jesus Yes, I'm going through ah. Oh, there are Amen. men He who stands in the race Oh, yes, God's be the light Oh, he feels to be burned Others are said it because it is new But not very many expect to go through As for me, I'm going through By the grace of God, I'm we will go through I'll They pay the price, whatever others do Do you feel the way? I'll take the way we the Lord, despise few. I'm going through with Jesus. I'm going, I'm going through. Watch this now. I rise up with Jesus alone. Oh yes, I for a pillow like Jericho was home. Living is moment with his face in view. And shrink from my pathway and fail to go through. As for me, I'm going to. As for you, yes, I'm going to. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. I'll take the way. When the Lord despises you, I'm going to with Jesus. Oh, I'm going to. Ah, oh, oh, brother, brother now, sister, brother, take up the, the cross. cross. Oh, give, give up, up the world. I count it as wrong. Oh, sell all the hearts and give to the poor. Then go through with Jesus and those who endure ask for us. I'll 
take the win. We will have lost these fights too. We will go into with Jesus. I'm going to ask for her. I'm going to. Yes, I'm going to. We're going through. I'll pay the price. Oh, whatever on that do. I'll take the win. We don't know. This fight's too. We're going through with Jesus. I'm going to. Can you make that pledge individually now? I'm going to. I'll pay the price. Whatever other God grant it to you. God bless you. God hold you. God strengthen you. Give you divine energy to hold true to service to live above the reproach of this hour. To walk in the light. To abide in His truth. To love the Lord with all your heart. With all your mind, for walking in life, for walking in this country, for abiding in this righteousness, in the name of Jesus Christ, we the Lord of this place, we are going to win, Jesus, I'm going. Yes, sir. Oh, all oh, other oh, ones stormy me this part in Jesus. Jesus. Touch and say a search evermore. Hallelujah. Have oh, 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 you had God this morning? How many raise your hands for the Lord? I say I've had God. Amen. I'll say thou art Hallelujah, Let's confess it one more time. I've anchored. Oh, Called my soul. He's a sure hand call. He will hold you through the sons of life, through the cares of life, through each other. He will stand for you. No more. You won't fall off it by this hand call. What's that? The tempest. Let's sweep over the wine. Stormy.
Lord, will grant their needs, will grant their heart desires, will meet them at the point of your needs. And give victory like never before. Oh, oh, my God. Stop it. Oh, in Jesus, I say, Amen. As you have been prayed for, just believe and live. There are so many people now to be prayed for. upon. I pray Lord that you remember them. You know their needs. You know their heart desires. You know what brought them to the altar. Father, they have broken their penitence. They love you. They want you, oh God. I pray you rise. Jesus. Now I want the deacons those who are prayed for you can guide them out this way. Guide them out through the pastor's area so that they could make space for others who are to be prayed for us. Those who have been prayed for, you can be guided out this way. Don't worry, come this way. If you have been prayed for, just believe. believe all things are possible whatever they need is Calvary takes care he knows your heart he knows your needs he will do it he has done it he said a broken and a contrite spirit he will not despise Falling off this morning in the name of Jesus. Christ is my Lord. Hallelujah. The fetters are falling off. Lord, break every fetters in the name of Jesus. Reach out to your sons. Reach out to your daughters. You know their needs. Turn it, Lord Jesus. Pass them out, our gentle Savior. In the name of Jesus. I'm saved evermore. The song of my soul sings the Lord made me whole. It has been the old story so blessed oh yes of Jesus who saved who so have we have all our home in the heaven all 
of your children are not ashamed of you. We Do not be ashamed of them. Touch them, God. A broken and a contrite spirit. You promise not to despise. Arise, for God. Come to the healing. Arise, for God. Unto the deliverance, unto the salvation of your people, in the name of Jesus. Open tempest with me, over the walls of the deep. In Jesus, I'm sick evermore. Oh, grant. Grant it, Lord, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Let the hands of your servants, the hands of the presbyter, be laid upon your people. Oh, let it touch them. Let it bless them. Let it mean deliverance. Let it mean salvation. Let it mean breakthrough. Let it mean overcoming in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Secure. In the heaven of rest, I have anchored, have anchored my soul. In the heaven of rest, who I'll say, thou hast lived no more. Oh, the tempest makes me. What a wild story. Yes, sir. In Jesus, I'm saved Oh, come to the Savior, we patiently wait to save our His power divine. You just come and call your soul in the heaven of Christ and sing, my beloved is mine. Oh, I have anchored, I have anchored my soul in the heaven of Christ. Oh, I say. Save evermore. We have 
blanco de pan Coronazos in the heaven Oh, we'll say thou asis no deliverances those that are oppressed are set free the people that have been obsessed with one kind of habit or the other they've been delivered lord how we thank you for your word you promised us that this word will come as a washing of the water by the word and it will wash your church clean father we thank you because you have done that this afternoon Perhaps the preacher might not have planned it to go that route, to preach it that way. But Lord, it pleases you over to bring it that way. Because you bring it to meet the need of your people. Yes. Father, we pray all the things that you have cast out of our lives, may they never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we know that Satan will come back to check if that place is filled with your spirit. By the time he comes back, may he meet the landlord in the name of Jesus Christ. He's an illegal occupier and we have sent him packing. Father, we pray, oh God, this day, by the time he comes back to check, may he meet you, the landlord in the house, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for those that are on the radio land. They don't have this opportunity of first hand, Lord. But you told us, oh God, that wherever this message is preached, said the pillar of fire will be identified with it. They have listened to it, but the brand pray for people on radio. He pray for people on tape. Pray for people who oh, through telephone and they got healed. Yeah. Father, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit send the same virtue unto them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord Jesus. We appreciate you for this revival. We will come back in the evening again for the capping. May it be much more glorious than this. Because we know that in the evening time, you say it shall be light. You will come back again. We shall be here waiting for you. May you come back again in Jesus' name. Give us the opportunity to make the second service. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Don't worry. The Lord has done it. I wanted him to pray for those on the hookup land because I felt a pull that somebody is testing for that. And whoever you are, the Lord reach out to you. The Lord bless every one of you. Amen. We're going.